एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम रीति एंड आई एम बैक विद अनदर लेक्चर इन द एस क्वेल सीरीज सो इन द लास्ट सेट ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी वर लर्निंग अबाउट सम टाइप्स ऑफ एस क्वेल कमांड्स लाइक अपडेट इंसर्ट डिलीट सेलेक्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी वुड बी लर्निंग अबाउट वन मोर टाइप ऑफ एस क्वेल कमांड दैट इज अल्टर कमांड सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द वेरी स्टार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर्स वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ एस क्वेल कमांड्स सो दे आर वी लर्न अबाउट फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ एस क्वेल कमांड द वेरी फर्स्ट वन वॉज डी क्यू एल the second one was dml the third one was ddl the fourth one was dcl and the fifth one was tcl now what is dql so dql basically stands for data query language command so whenever we want to make any query into our data or whenever we want to fetch the details from our database we use this dql command now the second one was dml command that is data manipulation language command now data manipulation language command is basically used whenever we want to manipulate some data like whenever we want to insert some data whenever we want to update some data whenever we want to delete some data basically doing manipulations on the data the third command was the ddl command that is data definition language command now data definition language command mostly deals with the definition or the schema of the data basically like creating the table creating the data base uh, doing some modification in the database doing some modification in the table so whenever we are dealing with the schema or the definition of the table we use this ddl command now the fourth one is dcl command that is basically data control language command now in this data control language command we set some controls on our database so in that case dcl command is used the fifth one is tcl command that is basically transaction control command so whenever we are doing some transaction and we need some control on that transaction we use this tcl command now in the dql command we have already learned about the select command in the dml command we have already learned about the insert update and delete command in the ddl command we have already learned about the create and drop command so in this particular video we would be learning about the alter command and then we would be learning about the truncate and the rename command now what is alter command so alter is a ddl command that is used to modify or change existing database objects such as table indexes or constraints basically doing some modification in the schema so whenever we want to do any kind of modification into our database object into our definition or into our schema we use the alter command so consider that right now i am having a employee table in my employee database now in this particular employee table i am having three columns but there comes a requirement where i need to add one more column to this employee database so this particular addition of column is done using the alter command consider that there is one more requirement which comes that you have to change the column name from employee id to id so this particular change is also done using the alter command so whenever we want to do any kind of modification or changes in our database tables schemas we use this alter command so let's see all the things that alter command can help us do so mostly it is used to modify the schema so whenever we want to mod do some modification in the columns like addition of new column deletion of column modification of column and much more we use the alter command so let's see how the alter command is used the queries and then we will go to the mysql workbench and execute all the queries so the very first use case is adding a column as i told that alter command basically help us in doing any modification in the schema so what is the schema so whenever we provide all the column names or the characteristics of our table we call this as schema so whenever we want to add a column basically doing some modification in the schema we use the alter command so the query for adding a column is alter table then we provide the table name and then we provide this add and then we provide the column name which column we are adding then the data type of that particular column and if we have any constraint or not we provide this so whenever we used to create the table we used to provide all these values like the column name data type and constraint in the same way whenever we are adding a column we provide all the properties like column name data type and constraint and we provide this alter command followed by the table and then we provide the table name in which we want to alter the data so let's see from the mysql workbench how we can add a column in our particular table so here you can see that we already have a database with the name xyz and in that particular xyz we have a table called as employee now in this particular employee table we would be adding one more field that is employee date of birth which is not existing as of now so what we will do is we will give this alter and then we will give the table provided by the table name that is employee now we'll add a column dob so we'll give add 
and then we will give the column name that is dob then we will give the data type that is varchar and let's give the character limit as 20 and then we will provide the constraint so if we execute the query just now what it will do that it will create a dob column name but all the values in that dob column name will be null so if you want any default value to be there you can give a default constraint so we can give default and here we can give the value as np that is not present so if we run this particular query what it will do it will first go it will alter the table employee it will add a dob column and then it will give the default value as np wherever null is present so let's just execute this query so once you execute this query you can see a success and when we will try to see all the details of this particular table you can see that a dob is created with np 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 because all the values for now is null so uh, it has taken the default value that is np now let's see the second use case of alter command that is drop a column. So whenever we want to drop or delete a column we use this alter command. So here you can see we have given the query as alter and then we provide the table followed by the table name and then we provide the drop command then we give the column which we want to drop and then we provide the column name. So let's go to MySQL workbench and let's just execute this query. So for now we have created this dob column. Let's just delete only this particular column. So first I'll give alter and then I'll provide table and then I'll give the table name that is employee and then I will provide the drop command and then I will provide column saying that I want to drop the column and then I will provide the column name that is dob. Now let's just execute this query. So you can see the query is successful. Let's see that if it has been deleted from our particular table or not. So we'll just execute this query and here you can see that we can't see any DOB field. So this particular column DOB is deleted whenever we use this alter command followed by the drop command. Now the third use case is modify the data type of an existing column. So whenever we want to do some modification in the data type of an existing column which is present we use this alter command. So for that we use this modify clause. So the modify clause is oftenly used with an alter table statement in SQL. It allows us to change the definition or the properties of an existing column in a table. So whenever we want to change the definition or the properties of a column in table we use this alter command along with the modify clause so here you can see the query so the query is alter table then we give the table name like which table we want to do modification and then we provide this modify command and then we provide the column name like in which column we want to modify and then we provide the new data type like which new data type we want to set for that particular column so the our command modifies the column name to a new data type so let's go to my mysql bug bench and let's see how it works so for now let's just modify the data type for age let's make age as varchar so what we will do we will give alter and then we will provide table and then we will provide the table name that is employee and then we will provide this modify and then we will provide the column name that is age and then the new data type so the new data type for age is varchar 3 so let's just execute this query so you can see that we have got a success so for now the data type for this particular age column has been changed to varchar now the fourth use case is change the name of an existing column so whenever we want to change the name of an existing column like in earlier use case we saw that how we can change the data type of a column in this use case we can note that how we can change the name of that particular column so the change command is often used with an alter table statement in sql it helps us to change the name or data type of a column within a table so whenever we want to change the name or change the data type of a column in a table we use this change along with the alter command so the query is alter table followed by the table name and then we provide this change then we provide the old column name and then we provide the new column name like from old column name to the new column name like what is the new column name you want to give and then if there is any new data type for that particular column we provide in this way so the above command changes the old column name to a new column name and 
also its data type so the old column name is changed to new column name and the new column name has a new data type if the new column name doesn't have a new data type you can give the data type of that particular old column name only so let's go to mysql workbench and see so let's just modify this age column name to employee age so let's see how we can do so we'll give this command alter table followed by the table name that is employee and then we will provide this change and then we will provide the old column name that is age and then we will provide the new column name that is employee age and if there is any new data type else we need to provide the data type of this age column only so that is var care 3 and let's just execute this query so once you execute this query you can see a success so let's see if we are able to see this in our table or not so let's run this select star from employee and here you can see that the age column name has now been modified to employee age that is emp age so in this way using the alter command we can change the column name as well so this was one of the way in which we can rename our column there is one more way in which we can rename either our table our column our constraints and much more that is using the rename command so the rename command is used to change the name of an existing database object such as a table so whenever we want to rename the table name column so whenever we want to rename the column name index or constraint whenever we want to rename the constraint name so the query for the same is alter table then the table name and then we provide this rename and then we provide like which thing we want to rename like table column constraint anything and then we provide the old column name like here we are renaming the column so we will provide the old column name and then we provide this to like basically you want to rename the old column name to the new column name so we provide to and then we provide the new column name the above command renames the old column name to the new column name so let's see from the mysql workbench so what we will do now we will revert this employee age to age so what we will do is we will give this alter table followed by the table name that is employee and then we provide the rename and then we provide what we want to rename that is our column so we will provide column and then we provide the old column name so that is emp h and then we provide this two and then we provide the new column name so we will give this h so let's just execute this query so you can see that we have got a success and when we execute this command select star from employee to see all the data present in our table so you can see that now this emph has now been renamed to h so in this way we can rename our column name table name or constraints so this was all about alter command in this particular video i hope you like this video so if you like this video please hit the like button if you're someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful you can go ahead and subscribe also if you have not followed me on my social media handles you can go ahead and follow me the links are in the description till then take care keep learning keep growing keep smiling bye all